Who is the one free agent that each team in the NFC can least afford to lose? We're going to go team by team and examine that question today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are locked on NFL scouting with the Draft Dude, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Speaking of every day, a big welcome, thank you, and shout out to our everydayers. Those of you who make us your first listen every day and never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Joe, happy Thursday. Happy February to ah, you. Yes. Happy February. February 1st. It's a big month, right? Valentine's yeah, Day. A lot, a lot going on this month. Yeah. Um, Combine will be here before we know it. Yep. That'll be fun. Off season really starts to heat up. What's our first um what's our first hurdle in deadline? Because we know deadlines spur action. Was it the uh it, is it the tag deadline? I believe so. Yeah, it's coming up. I know you have that written down on our, our content calendar, right? Uh, yeah, but if I loaded a tab on my computer, it could fry. So tag deadline is um March fifth. All right, so we we're got doing some... a mock draft next week. So that's Perfect. something we're doing in in February. Mock draft. We've done a few of those together. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to do it. Get a landscape look here. Let's go post senior bowl mock draft. Tis the season for the dudes, but we're gonna do free agency here today. We did free agency yesterday on the AFC side of things. The free agent. Each team could least afford to lose. We saved our most compelling conversations for, I think, two of the last three teams that we discussed. It wasn't on purpose, but that's just how it worked out, right? Like, <laughs> We'll see where the uh, contested conversations come here on the NFC side of things. We're going to go in backwards order just in case. It also lies in the NFC East as it did with the AFC East. So, Joe, we're going to start with the NFC East and the division champion Dallas Cowboys the free agent they can least afford to lose this offseason as they push their chips into the table, as Jerry Jones said just the other week. They're going to be all in this, this year. Also came out and said Bill Belichick was someone that he could work with for sure, right? Uh, weird thing to say. I have this as Tyron Smith. I think this is um, maybe not who you're going to pick. There's some other candidates, but to me, it, it is an all-in season. Uh, you feel like Mike McCarthy has to take this team further than he has to this point. And Tyron Smith was unbelievable this year at left tackle. And I know that there's been injury concerns, but the last thing I'm going to do is create a question at tackle when Terrence Steele really didn't have a great season at right tackle. I know Tyler Smith is a nice contingency to go out to the le to left tackle, but if I can get another season of Smith and Smith on that left side, I'm rolling with that. I agree with you in Tyron Smith. Um, I think Stephon Gilmore's value is mitigated by the emergence of Deron Bland as yeah. the pick six king. And then you know you're getting digs back next year. You didn't have digs all season, right? So you feel pretty good at corner. Um, the other major snap takers here are Tyler Beatus, who I'm pretty I'm met on him, dude. So so am I. And so I think the the quality of the player of Tyron Smith moves the needle very much in his favor. Uh, J. Ron Curse at safety, 76% uh, of snaps, and then Tony Pollard, 70% of snaps. I'm taking Tyron Smith. He's that, he's that good of a player. Yep. So that's the guy for me. Which takes us to the Philadelphia Eagles. Not a, not a scary list, right? At all. Yeah, I guess this is this is where you... you 
feel better about how things ended is you, you really know what worked and what didn't, and you can build off of it this off season. How about this slap together linebacker room? Just get a chuckle out of, of Morrow and Cunningham. And they're, they're the two leading snap takers that are expiring contracts for, for Philadelphia. I, I picked Morrow. Um, not with great convictions. I think that speaks to more of the lack of concern with the expiring contracts in Philadelphia. Um, but I feel like he was at least a stable player to an extent, can play in space a little bit, can cover a little bit. The good news is, is that Philly should be pretty unconcerned overall with their list of expiring contracts. We go with Fletcher Cox. I know they've got Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis maybe doesn't hasn't necessarily fully lived up to his investment to this stage. Uh, Milton Williams is a nice player, but that defense was bad. And Fletcher Cox has been a part of some good defenses. So yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lose sleep over these linebackers. Uh, I think Fletcher Cox can still go a little bit. So he would be the one that I would have for Philly. I thought about Fletcher Cox, and this is the reason I didn't pick him. I was so bothered by the comments – coming out of that locker room about the lack of leadership down the stretch. And you, you've done this, bring back Brandon Graham, bring back uh, Kelsey, bring back Fletcher Cox on these short deals. And it's like, if those guys aren't setting the temperature in the room, man, like it's fair, you know, and I'm not, I don't even know. I don't know anything about Fletcher Cox in, in, in that type of deal, but I don't know. For some reason, I just feel, I feel like, all right, it's time to just, go with some new players. I don't know, but Morrow, I'm not losing sleep if they lose Morrow. I'll right. tell you that, right? right. So uh, I do think there's an obvious choice for the New York football giants. So. Oh, one choice. Xavier McKinney. Yeah, absolutely. Versatile safety, 25 years old, stud player. Who's that even the go. other contender? Dory Jackson? Saquon Barkley. Yeah, we, we, we didn't. I know you're not. No, yeah, I know you're anti pay Saquon pay running backs in general. So I know you're, you're yeah. not going to stop yeah. on that hill too hard. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. For anyone who's questioning, uh, James Cook could lead the NFL in yards from scrimmage the next two seasons. And I will be advocating for the Bills to let him walk. The Washington Commanders. Uh, Cameron Curl for me. Another safety. Young, good, good young player. I think they got a nice pair of safeties back there. Their back seven has got questions throughout it. I don't have questions about Cameron Crow. Maybe you make a case for Kendall Fuller because if they don't bring him back, you kind of worry about what they have at corner. But I think they I think have Cameron some young Curl. guys there, right? But I mean, they weren't drafted by this regime, right? You know how that goes, and they're yeah. kind of unique players. Is Ben? Are they going to roll with Benjamin St. Juice in the slot again? Like, <laughs> is Manuel Forbes if? Is the first round label even going to matter for him if he doesn't show himself to this next coaching staff? I don't know, man. It's concerning. I'll make it really easy. Kendall Fuller is going to be 29 years old this upcoming season. 30 is a very dangerous number for quarters. Yep. Cameron Curl's 25. Safety's age more gracefully anyway. And you got a, a whole other contract to get through before you got to worry about that number. Cameron Curl. That's my pick, too. All right. The NFC East in the books. We're going to shift our focus to the North and the South coming up. So be sure to stick with us. But when you're hiring for your small business, you want to be certain that you have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. And hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats right now and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy, and they even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL. That's linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Folks, I am obsessed with DoorDash. I think the convenience of DoorDash is completely unmatched, especially in our busy lives. We all got stuff going on. I mean, my daughter, she's got something every night, dance, gymnastics, swim, and it's a little bit challenging from time to time to have dinner made. And so we just go to our DoorDash app on our phone and order dinner comes right to our front door. They'll also bring you groceries. 
it is just unbelievable in terms of the time that it saves and takes away that burden and worry of what's for dinner. So check it out. Got a deal here for you. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more in your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, subject to change. Terms apply. Again, that's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more in your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, subject to change. Terms apply. Kyle, I got a I got a little uh, DoorDash story from last night, literally last oh, night. Okay. I um, don't know this. So I'm, yeah, this... I'm... I'm on pins and needles just like everybody at home. Go ahead. This went down last night, Kyle Krabs, and exactly what I just talked about in the thing. My my wife uh, took my daughter to uh, dance class, and she gets home from dance a little bit late, and so we just door dashed, right, and ordered uh, Greek salads from our favorite local Mediterranean restaurant, and so... Is that the one we went to? Uh, I have no idea. Probably not. Probably not. Um, so... Food shows up, you know, bring it inside. And my my daughter ate spaghetti, right? So beforehand, she ate before my wife and I. So she was just chilling, playing play, playing with toys. And so we get the food, and I take the food, and my, my daughter needs something. So I'm going to go deal with this. So for some reason, I I, I open up my Greek salad, and I, I look at it, and I, I start to touch it. And I'm, I look at my wife, and I say, this feels cold to me. She goes, well, there's vegetables. There's vegetables in there. <laughs> I'm like, well, it feels cold. So I put it in the microwave. Put it in the microwave for 90 seconds. Went and helped my daughter. Came back, and I had a nice piping hot Greek salad to consume. Don't recommend it, Kyle. Don't recommend heating up lettuce and tomatoes <laughs> and cucumbers and, and Kalamata olives that are supposed to be for a Greek salad in your microwave. Pretty much ruined it. I, I'm sure it was very floppy. Oh, God, dude, it was so bad. I, I wound up eating the chicken and throwing out the rest. <laughs> you should have just pulled out the chicken. That's what I did. I ate the chicken and, and threw no, out the rest. No, but you should have just pulled out the chicken and microwaved the chicken. Kyle, there's there's no explanation for, for what I did. There's It's a complete brain fart. No explanation whatsoever. I just want... I don't know. I thought... This is my rash... Bro, I, I thought it was... I thought it was like a like a like a bowl. Like a Greek bowl with rice on the bottom. That's my. It's not. It's not. It's not. No. But my yeah, my not. my wife. She just let it happen. I'm sitting there poking at. It. I'm like, this feels cold to me. She's like, yeah, there's she vegetables. Tried to tell you to just let it go. She could. She could have said. She goes, Joe, you're 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 putting a salad in the microwave. And I like cold chicken on a salad. There's no there's no explanation, brother. The chicken because the food's good. That's right. <laughs> Standing out here in the freezing cold, we so, some free chicken sandwiches. <laughs> Door National bring you the food; they don't bring you the brain. The yeah, they don't bring you the brain for the get, food. Once right. you get it. Well, congratulations on microwaving your salad. Yeah, don't don't recommend it. NFC North, Detroit Lions, expiring contracts. Long list, Joe. Yeah, I'm settling on Graham Graham Glasgow though. You know, I think this what team. Great- value that contract was this yeah year. he came back right from denver yeah. and it's where he belongs man he could play three spots which is huge and um it's just an identity player for them and i know they get to bring back ben johnson and the big big part of what that scheme is run the football play action you know you're putting a lot in your offensive line to protect and i'm not messing with the good thing there in graham glasgow i want him back i agree wholeheartedly i think just if you were to contemplate another name i mean Jer- i mean jerry jacobs he's a restricted free agent so it's yeah. not that they, they, like they, you don't have a choice there he's a restricted free agent that's a no-brainer for the economics of of restricted yeah. free agency um one of these pass rushers is the next most pressing name. i'd say chauncey gardner johnson but w- with how brian branch played this year i'm concerned Unconcerned, yeah. I mean, they, they're Dan Skipper. <laughs> you know, like your heavy, your heavy personnel tight end. I don't know. They, they're, they're in pretty good shape. Your quality starting right guard seems like the right answer. Uh, Green Bay Packers have some options with their list. You got convictions here because I don't. I get it down to John Runyon, Keyshawn Nixon, and Darnell Savage. 
Yeah. Um, other players that took meaningful snaps, two couple of safeties in Jonathan Owens and Rudy Ford. And then obviously AJ Dillon is the second running back. I I think I'm going to go Keyshawn Nixon. Special teams values through the roof. Absolute blazer plays in the nickel. It's a really important position. And how about, how about them going off the board and hiring Jeff Halfley as their DC? Bro, these guys getting out of college, man. They don't want anything to do it. It's going to keep going. But we got the head coach of Boston College leaving to be a coordinator. And the, the source saying he wants to take coach a job football. That, that's about coaching football and not oh, fundraising. Get it. get it. And recruiting his own team. I think I've I've enjoyed so much of I've been to ACC Media Day I think every year that Jeff Halfley's been the head coach at Boston College. I love the way he talks, man. And I am I like deeply in, in, informed on the uh, the schematics of the Boston College defense. I'm not, but I I something about that guy. There's a leadership. There's a a tangible presence about him in in the way that he communicates. I got a. Uh... It's another thing in February, Joe. The coaches' clinics start this month. It's like uh-huh. the, the co- Nike Coach of the Year clinics and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. one uh, at the end of the month that's it's about three hours for me that I'm thinking about going to. We'll discuss that off air. We got to make a pick here for the Packers. You're going Keyshawn Nixon? I, 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 I do not need to make a pick. I've already made a pick. Uh, I'm going to go. Okay, I'll go John Runyon. Uh, that offensive line has just been so not stable with, with personnel available. Runyon has been there. I don't know that he's an impact player, but I think he's uh, like one of those unheralded Fills in at a bunch of spots, but it's played like over a thousand snaps each the last three seasons for them. So I'll lean him. I think I think Savage has a case as well. I'll know that I although I know there's been some inconsistency. Yeah, it's been some up and downs. Yeah. With, with big him. play in the playoffs, right? Yeah, absolutely. And another almost big play too. Yeah. In San Francisco. Yeah. Uh Minnesota Vikings. Who's Daniel who's Hunter. not not the new man on the Minnesota Vikings? Who needs to be back? Daniel Hunter. Is it? Yeah, unbelievable season. And if, if they don't have him back, who the heck is rushing the passer? Wadham, Wadham's their second best pass rusher. He's what about, he's what about who's playing quarterback? Oh man, that's a good point, Kyle. I'm going. Kirk Did I Kyle. forget Kirk? Did I forget Kirk? <laughs> I forgot Kirk. Okay, and you know what my fear in in all of this has been being the being the guy who forgets somebody. I did. It was this <laughs> happened to me, and I and I was so prepared. I did all this yesterday. I don't. Even, I just you know I have just my pick in front of me right now. Yeah, it was that was I goofed. I goofed. I just yes. like putting putting the Greek salad in the, in the microwave, man. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm the I'm the one who's not supposed to be firing on all cylinders right now. I know. I know. I'm, I did. It's, it's I did this for you. This was to help you. Um, I think if you have a con, a quarterback contingency plan, I think the nail hunter is a perfectly acceptable answer. Right. But you don't. So, but Kirk. you don't. And maybe the exodus of coaches in Tampa Bay spurs Baker Mayfield to be available. And maybe you go that route and feel good about it. I don't know. But uh, Chicago, the Bears, the Bears, Jalen Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, Jalen Johnson. Done. Next. Uh, let's, yeah. let's just move on. Next. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, speaking of. This is the conversation because you got contenders. You got Baker Mayfield, you, you got, got Levante right, right. David. You got Antoine Winfield. You got Mike Evans. Who's Holy the other guy that you said five? Who's the other one that really? No, I just Winfield, Mayfield, Levante, David, and, and Mike Evans. I'm going. I'm going with the best young player. The best young player is Antoine Winfield Jr. I worry about. I worry about paying Baker Mayfield a lot. I worry about Mike Evans. What is he? Is he, he going to get a four year, a hundred million dollar deal or something like that? You know, I know that he's the, he's gonna go sign in for the Jets, play for the Jets. Do you read that athletic piece yet? No, I didn't. Come I, on, and I, I meant to do it this morning. Come I, on, I, dude. I know I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Um Winfield is the player who you sign that has the greatest chance of still playing at a high level at the end of the contract. Right. So that's the one you, you spend on. Not an easy choice, though. Um, I, I think if Canales is back, he's not. I think you could probably have a, a very good argument for Baker Mayfield. But I do not envy 
Tampa. Nope. Or Baker's camp for nope. trying to sort through all that. Nope, not at all. You want to do the rest of the South after the break? Yeah, we we better do that. All right, coming up the rest of the South and the West, so stick with us. Folks, you got to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun, easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. The format is incredible. It's just you against the numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. It's just you against numbers. Here's what you do. You select two or more players. You pick more or less on their projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. It doesn't take long. Picks can be made in under a minute. And then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. I love all these sports. Love them even more. When I have a prize picks entry going into a slate of games, it just makes it that much more exciting. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Who finished second? New Orleans? I think so. Nine and eight missed on tiebreakers. Yeah. Saints. Yeah. Firing contract most <laughs> pressing. There's not a whole lot to be concerned with here. Well, My choice. Go ahead. I was just going to say, here's your good news. After four consecutive years of working through all your voided dollars and having attrition hit your roster, this feels like the first year you're not actually going to have any attrition and getting worse by players who can't run back yeah they'll probably have to cut some guys but yeah it's not like there's guys that they just can't bring back and i'm sure they're very excited to have andrews pete finally come off the books for them as well yeah uh, my pick here is isaac yadam um corner and i think what this really comes down to is a little bit of maybe some uncertainty around marshawn Lattimore, and, and yadam's been a good depth player i think having him back returning to know that you can pair with paulson adibu who had a very good season Gives you some options there at corner. You know, I know you still have Alante Taylor, but it, this really speaks to the to the lack of concern that I have with the list. Rashid Sahid is an exclusive rights free agent, so like no chance he's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I think it's got him. Sure. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, he's Pete's the only free agent, ex, un, unrestricted free agent that's played more than forty five percent of the snaps for the team this year. You're not paying Pete? No. No, especially with all the other contracts that they've invested between McCoy and Ruiz. Ruiz, they paid him, Ramjack, yeah. And the first-round contract in Penning. Yeah. They got James Hurst. Been a great reserve for them. Yeah, an excellent swing player for them up front. So I'm I'm totally fine with Isaac Yao, uh, which takes us to the Atlanta Falcons. Tough one here. I, I'm going to. I'm yeah, I think it's tough. Uh, I'm gonna go with Calais Campbell. I know yeah, he's like with 30, a 38 year old. <laughs> he's 38, man. But like Grady Jarrett injured again. What I mean, what do you have on that D line that you really love? I'm not picking Bud Dupree. Nate Landman's an exclusive right free agent. Who I mean, who's the pick here? It's to me, it's Calais Campbell. So Calais Campbell, at 37 years old, had six and a half sacks this season. When's the last season Calais Campbell had more than? Six and a half sacks. When's the last season he had more than six and a half? Yeah. I don't know. The one before it. At five and a half. I have no idea. 2018. Clay's Campbell had his best sack production season this year in Atlanta. Really? Since 2018. Okay. Guy can still go a little bit. And and Clay's. Yeah. Clay's Campbell's pick. Raheem Morris, the coach there, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like having a guy like that would be so good. Carolina Panthers. Brian Burns. It is Brian Burns. I mean, they have Jeremy Chin, Frankie Louvu. It's Brian Burns. Especially Burn. because you didn't do the Rams trade. Right. There, there's an extra unspoken cost associated with Burns if you let him walk. Can't do it, man. That would be catastrophic. And this is like this is like uh Patrick Peterson in Arizona, where like we spent a hundred million years talking about getting a CB2. Now it's like, okay, we spent a hundred million years talking about getting a complimentary rusher for Brian Burns, and now like now you're just not gonna have Brian Burns. So yeah. I I've watched quite a bit 
of Carolina, um, watching Luvu, watching some of the expiring contracts, um, watching a little bit of Averro's defense. You know who I think the second best pass rusher on the line, so not Luvu, who's a very good blitz pressure linebacker player is? I guess the second, best, the second best defensive line pass rusher on that roster. I'm guessing you don't think it's Derek Brown. No, I don't. Uh, it's not DJ Johnson. Shy Tuttle, I know he didn't play that many snaps. Uh, I wouldn't think it's Gross Monos or Houston. Second best pass rusher on this roster is Marquise Haynes. Did five sacks last in 2022 and then had a back injury and I think had a concussion late in the season. He's always uh, got something. Yeah. R- banged up guy, but oh, he, he from an actual pass rush skills perspective, that's your second best pass rushing defensive lineman on the roster is Marquise Haynes. So let's so. not let Brian Burns go. Uh, the NFC West. San Francisco 49ers. I mean, is it Chase Young just based on what you gave no. up to get him? No. We're going to say I, Gibson, I, like a 34-year-old safety? I, I think Deshaun Gibson's more valuable. At 34, whatever he's going to be? Played 90% of the snaps. I know year. he's been very good for a number of years. I just... Like, at some point, you got to... Deshaun Gibson's my choice. I will not give Chase Young this selection. The effort's just not been there. The the, the motor's not been there. You got John Feliciano here. Their best player that has an expiring contract is Deshaun Gibson. He's just a 34-year-old safety. That didn't stop us from any it did, it didn't stop us from Tyron Smith. Yeah, it's a left tackle, man. Versus a safety. Okay. I'll say that their most their best player with an expiring contract is to Sean Gibson. The Los Angeles Rams. Kevin Dotson, the guard. Coleman Shelton was a good scheme fit at center. Yep. I don't think the ceiling's super high. I think Dotson was a solid player. I think one of those two is the right answer. I would agree. So what do you what do you put more stock in? The athletic undersized center type or the slightly stiff? And, and dude, how about like Alaric Jackson? He's a left tackle. It's not he's Joe Nopu. It's not Joe left. Nopu. And he's an expiring contract, but a restricted free agent. So the youth movement is real. Yeah. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks. There's there's contenders here for sure, uh, but Leonard Williams is the one that stands out because you gave you have a second round pick for him. Yeah. You should probably find a way to make that work. Yeah, I know. Like their entire middle of their offensive line is an expiring contract with Haynes, Lewis, and Brown. No offense, a, a, you know, dynamic tight end, but to me, yeah. it's. Letter for well, I letter I don't, and I don't, yeah. I don't mean to be rude here, but I have a very vested interest in finding quality free agent into your offensive lineman for this offseason. Mm-hmm. Um, I found one in Damian Lewis. I think he's a stud. I think he's an absolute stud. Probably second on this list, but Evan Brown. Mm-hmm. Let him walk. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, Damian Lewis, probably second on this list. I mean, you obviously have Mike McDonald coming in, so there's going to be some schematic changes, but the tight end room's been really important for this team, and you got a couple expiring contracts at tight end with Noah Fant and Parkinson, so one of those guys could potentially be really important as well. Um. 
yeah, Leonard Williams with the investment that you made to get him in house is probably somebody that you're you're vested in bringing back. Don't give away a second round pick for eight games. Eight games. Can't do it. The Arizona Cardinals. This is a tough one, right? Because there's not a lot of names here that really concern you. Yeah, what 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 is happening here? Um, I think I'm gonna put down Marquise Brown. I think he tried to play through that heel injury this year and and didn't wasn't able to be very effective. But this is a team that still feels like they're in on Kyler Murray, obviously. And whatever I know that this regime didn't give up first round pick for Marquise Brown, but whatever you thought that could be, um, I'd try to see it out. I wouldn't give him like a long term deal, but I think a like a one year proven incentive laden deal makes a lot of sense to me. If you get him healthy to pair with uh with Kyler and then get yourself another receiver with that early first round pick and you know, see what you can get done here with this passing game. But I they just don't have a lot of guys that concern me. So I went with Mar- Marquise Brown. I think it's the only I don't see the only valuable player. It's it's the only like asset, like plus asset. Yeah. That has the potential to be like a difference making player. So on principle, that's probably the right choice. That is going to do it for us here on Locked on NFL Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We hope you guys enjoyed this foray into the NFC conference and free agents. Uh, We will be back tomorrow with more programming. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make it a great rest of your day. We are out of here.